Cashflow Diary Podcast, episode 123. Welcome to yet another exciting episode of the Cashflow Diary Podcast. The podcast that teaches you insider tips, tactics, and strategies for creating leverage streams of cash flow into your life. Learn from top performing entrepreneurs, business owners, investors, and thought leaders from across the globe as they share their secrets to success. Like what you learn on this and other Cashflow Diary podcast episodes? Go to learninvestingnow.com and sign up to receive powerful tips and information that will help you succeed as an entrepreneur and investor. Now, here's your host, investor, entrepreneur, business owner, educator, speaker, author, and master facilitator of Robert Kiyosaki's Cashflow Game, Jay Massey. Hey guys, how you doing out there? And how's December treating you? I know it's right. <laughs> it's only been a few days in, but you should still be focused on December, not January yet. You heard me say that last time. For those of you join us for the first time or the 101st time or how many ever times, welcome. Uh, my name is Jay and I'm your host today. What we're going to be talking about, uh, if you caught last, uh, earlier, the, the previous episode, we were talking about a necessary skill. One of the necessary skills is learning how to fail. That is definitely something that you must learn to do. You got to learn and develop the muscle of failure and uh, or at least learning how to fail, uh, how to accept it, how to pursue failure, how to make sure you recover from failure, how to learn from failure, failure your own others, etc., etc., etc. Today, we're going to talk about another necessary skill. And when I say necessary, I just want to make sure that everyone is clear and understanding that these are not optional. You can't circumvent them. Now, you may not be the one to implement them, but you still have to do them. Your company still has to have them done. Somebody's got to do it. And if you're not the one implementing it, you're probably the one overseeing it. So you still need to know a little bit about it. And that's kind of where I'm coming from today is that you still need to know a little bit about it. However, there are some things that you need to know a lot a bit about. And this is definitely one of them, along with some more necessary skills that we'll be talking about in the not too distant future. See, the, what we're going to be talking about today, I believe very strongly, this one separates the, the men from the, the, the boys from the men, the men from the, Women? No, not the men from the women, because that's not right. It's more the girls from the, the little girls from the big girls, if you will. And uh, this is the one that absolutely makes all the difference. If you said to yourself, hey, I've tried to be an entrepreneur before. I've tried to do real estate before, Jay. It didn't work. Or or if you said, hey, I, I, I had a business and all these other things. At the end of the day, I'm going to say that it came down to one of many things, but definitely this one was one of the issues in a very, very strong way. And in fact, if you feel like you're still stuck at your job, if you're saying to yourself, you know, New Year is coming around the corner and, and one of the things I want to do is I want to make more money. I want to earn more money. This skill set is one of the necessary skills that you are going to need in order to make that happen. In fact, as I've said before, it's the number one problem of most, if not all, entrepreneurs or would-be entrepreneurs. I'm sure if you read the episode title, you know that we are talking something about marketing. What does that mean? What is it? And I find this interesting. When you look up definitions of this particular subject or topic, you get, you know, all kinds of answers. Uh, for example, when I when you type in what is marketing and you come up with uh, the Wikipedia answer, it simply says marketing is the methodology of communicating the value of a product or service to customers for the purpose of selling that product or service. OK, that's interesting, but it doesn't really tell me what I need to do today, Jay. I, I agree with you, but that, that's why we're talking about this, because at the end of the day, we, what do we need to do with it? I don't know. Let's see if I go over to uh, the business dictionary dot com there definition is the management process. Now, this is marketing, the management process through which goods and services move from concept to the customer. OK, it includes the coordination of four of uh, four elements called the four P's of marketing, uh, identification and selection and development of a product, determination of its price, selection of a distribution channel to reach the customer's place and 
development and implementation of a promotional strategy. Okay, that's interesting. And then I went over to Forbes.com and I kind of like this article the best of the ones that I did see. And, and it simply starts with, let's face it, to the average business person, marketing equals promotion. Marketing is what you say, how you say it, when you want to explain to someone how awesome your product is and why people should buy it. <laughs> I was like, okay, that's a, that's a more uh, closer answer. And when I say marketing, let me tell you why I think this one is so necessary. Okay, you, you really got to grasp this. It's necessary because the main difference between most employees, so if you think about the, you know, Robert Kiyosaki's cash flow quadrant, you've got the employees, the small business owners, the big business owners, and as well as the in investors, the main difference between employee and the other three quadrants is this level of which they master marketing, and one of the other necessary skills, sales, which we're going to talk about as well. So you say, Jay, I I've been in sales before. I know all about this. Well, let me tell you what I really mean. See, in my world and the way that I see things, you haven't been in sales if you've never taken a customer from cold to all the way through the end of a relationship all the way through to referral. What does that mean? That means I'm not talking about you had to, you know, you were given a whole set of leads. No, 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 no. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about the fact that you had to go find your own people to talk to. You didn't know who to talk to. You had to learn how to communicate to that person and then get them interested in a product and take them through that, that entire sequence so that on the other end that they felt that they were getting an excellent deal and they better had be, but they were getting an excellent deal uh, on whatever it is that you are representing or marketing or serving. See, marketing is the the piece about finding that audience. It's a piece about finding that person. Uh, a popular word today is that avatar that would actually be even kind of somewhat interested in what it is that you do. Going out there into the world to find complete strangers and give them an opportunity to come into your world to solve a problem that they may not even know that they had, or if they did know they have it, great, you still got to go out there and let them know that you exist. The interesting thing about real estate, and more importantly, real estate investors to me these days, is that for some reason, we have this tendency to believe that all I have to do is buy the house and the people will come to me. Of course, people need a place to stay. That I have a house. It'll be fine. It'll be full. It'll be this. And, you know, uh, and you've heard it said to some degree, uh, if, you, if the deal's good enough, the money will find you. And I know I've said things like that. And that's very, it's very true, but it's also very not true in the sense that the money can't find you if you've never paved a way for the money to get to your door which means you got to have some marketing. The major issue I believe strongly that I hopefully will be able to settle in this particular episode for you is to understand that part of the reason that your business isn't as large as you may want it to be yet is simply because not enough people know that you're even in business, period. A forgotten skill set is how to build, maintain, manage, curate, and grow a database, a Rolodex. That's where your business lies. It, it lies inside the potential customers who you know helps you to do and execute what you know. You can know a ton about real estate, and many of you do. However, if you don't know anyone to practice it with, it doesn't matter. See, I think every entrepreneur in every profession has this problem, especially the more self-employed or, or, you know, information is required to actually execute the strategy. Here's what I mean by that. Doctors, they have to learn how to market or they have to go to an HMO. Uh, dentists have to learn how to market as well. Uh, chiropractors, uh, loan officers, realtors, everybody's got to learn this skill and how to attract people to them. Failing to learn it, they typically become an employee. That's usually the pattern. That's usually what happens. And those are the things that I, I, I say that that's why it's a necessary skill. It may not be 
absolutely necessary as an employee unless you're employed as a marketer of someone else's services, but it is an absolute mandatory. You're like, Jay, but I've never done that. Doesn't matter. You have to learn how to do it because if you don't learn how to do it and learn how to do it well, you won't have customers. And with no customers, you therefore have no business. In the world of real estate, these are called tenants. Uh, These are called buyers. They're occasionally called sellers. And then here's the thing. You've got buyers and sellers of money, buyers and sellers of notes, buyers and sellers of houses, buyers and sellers of multifamily buildings, commercial real estate, all kinds of buyers and sellers to find who all have what I call their investor identity that you must learn to target and find and solve problems for. At some point, this probably begins to sound like a lot of work. (laughs) That's because it is. And it's actually one of the most important jobs that you should maintain control of as the CEO of your enterprising and growing organization. You will not grow your cash flow unless you grow your database. It's just not going to happen. You can try. You can think. Yeah, I mean, I don't care how long, how how much you sit at home wishing and learning. That's wonderful. But there must come a point at which you get up and get out and go get something, as Outcast would say. But that, those are the things that you absolutely must do. There is no option outside of that. If It's not that your product isn't great. It's not that your deal isn't great. It's not that real estate won't work for you. It's that you have not yet developed the skill set to attract to you the individual most likely to do business with you. Now, the good thing is, The relieving thing should be, this is a skill set. All skill sets can be learned, even by introverts, guys. Me being one of them. That's why I say that. Because it requires talking to strangers and inviting them into your world. (laughs) Two things that most introverts don't do. Talk to strangers and invite people in. Why on earth would we ever do that? You got to give us a really, really, really good reason. And at the end of the day, because of how we got started, because of the situation that we were in, it was no longer serving me to continue to act that way, right? So we had to learn to become completely different. So for me, in in my world, I want to have all of the strategies at my disposal to be able to attract people to the business. Because there's a concept out there when you're thinking about looking for business is you can farm or you can hunt when you can plant seeds or you carry a gun. (laughs) And I would rather do both because there's times when both are appropriate. However, here's my point. You're going to, you really hear me when I say this. And if you're not taking notes, you're going to want to write this one down. Everything works and nothing doesn't. I'll say that again. Everything works and nothing doesn't. Oftentimes, we are wondering what is the new shiny bobble that's going to make sure all these customers come and flood my door tomorrow, right? Tomorrow, today even. And it doesn't really matter so much to me what you do. I care that you do and that you do a lot of it and that you do it consistently And that you do it as it leads towards and leans into your personality type. Because if you don't have fun doing it, you're not gonna. Period. I don't care how good the strategy has worked for someone you know. If you don't have fun doing it, you're not going to do it no matter what. Marketing is this process of thinking, how do I want to attract, who do I want to attract, and how do I want them to know me? How do I want them to understand who we are, what we do, how we serve them? And so that when you speak, they listen because they go, oh, that's my guy. That's my gal. That's the product I want right there. And get them to raise their hand. I love the way, you know, we, we can do that these days and get people to self-select and say, hey, You're the one I want to work with. And that's exactly what you and I, that is our challenge, to understand our customers so well, to understand the person we're looking to serve so well that when we talk, even though we're talking and placing our message in mass media and and forms of communication, it still sounds like we're having a personal conversation to them. 
These are all skill sets that you learn over time. I love this idea. Because then it supports one of my core values I love to teach. It's one of the things that makes me excited is helping people understand what are concepts that are typically perceived to be complicated. And it gives me the opportunity to do this. There's a a, a gentleman out there who you may have heard of and maybe not, but you should uh, find him and his books and everything else that he's talking about because he talks about utility, not spelled in the way that you would normally think. It's Y-O-U-T-I-L-I-T-Y. His name is Jay Bear. Now, yes, I kind of like the first name, but that's not the reason you should be listening to him. It is a, a simple message that I heard from him when I was at the Infusion Con. And that's just a very large meeting for a lot of entrepreneurs and how they manage their databases and the software platform that we use. And he was just simply saying, have your marketing so good that people want to use it. And I was like, this is good. To me, that translates to you educate to dominate because if you can create something inside of your business that is marketing, but is educational based that your customer can use, then you become their go-to guy or gal or resource for whatever it is for their problems. And that's exactly what you want to do. You want to be able to have that content be shared? You're like, hey, make it useful to them. You want someone to like or tweet or retweet or whatever? Make it useful to them. And that begins the beginning of this attraction process. And some of the tools that we have today are absolutely amazing in terms of reach. Now, here's the thing I want to say. Don't get distracted by the tools. They're just tools. You know, uh, social media is a tool, okay? It's not the replacement for, it's the tool. It's I have a marketing strategy. Here's what we're going to do to execute it. Oh, by the way, here's a tool that can help us reach more people faster in more areas, more demographics. And those are the advantages that technology brings today. The technology in and of itself isn't the answer. I've said this before and I'll say again. You can have an expert tool, but that does not mean you know how to use it expertly. Yet, you can learn this and that's what I get excited about. And the the concept of creating marketing so good that people want to use it, people want to share it, people want to talk about it, people want to begin to adopt your methodology of thinking, of being, of talking, of walking, of putting on their putting on their belts the same way you do, or tying shoes, or knitting, or whatever it is that is your unique gift and genius that you are sharing with others as a benefit to them. That is the beginning of how you can educate to dominate. We all have something unique in that sense that we can share. And that's exactly what you should be doing. It makes me excited because now you're free to explore your creativity and most importantly, the things that you like to do. Oftentimes people ask me, so what's what's the thing that I should do? Should I be doing Facebook or do I do email or how do I get more investors? How do I get more buyers? I hear this all the time, especially from those participating in our wholesaling courses. They say, Jay, there's no buyers. Jay, there's no sellers. And it's funny because sometimes they're in the same marketplace, two different people. One comes to me and says, there's nobody buying. And the other one comes to me and says, there's nobody selling. And I'm just like, seriously? You're like, yeah, I can find all the buyers, but I can't find sellers. And the other person, I can find all the sellers, but I can't find buyers. And I'm like, you live in the same place. The only reason this happens is because they don't know that you're there. If they knew that you were a possible solution, you'd get the phone call, email, tweet, Facebook message, or whatever else it is that you want to use as a tool. But they don't know. Your job is to promote. To become a promoter, to tell everybody, hey, here's what I can do. And I can do it for 
these type of individuals. And if you are one of these type of individuals, this is what we specialize in. This is what we do. See, we are cash flow diary. What does that mean? That means we focus on anything that can create cash flow, which gives us a lot to choose from. And someone called me, I I was on the Flip Nerd podcast, and he, he called me agnostic toward the the vehicle that I use to create cash flow. And he's absolutely right. I just never thought of it in that particular term. Because if you think about it, a book, royalties, or or things of that nature, that becomes an asset and you can produce cash flow. Same thing with the song, right? Same thing with poems. Same thing with anything that you have the ability to create and can copyright or trademark and use your intellectual property to make happen. Processes. All of these things. And the, the great thing is, is that you and I have the capacity to breathe and think and we, we've got the opportunity in front of us today. We are just failing to let people know that we exist. So what are some of the things that you can do? Well, simply, you can decide to start. And in fact, some of the simplest things that you can do is to begin to tell people, but Jay, I don't, I, I, I'm not ready yet. <laughs> I hear that one all the time. You always start before you're ready. Just start. Because nothing happens until there's a sale, and you won't have a sale until you have people to talk to. You just won't. So you, you can think that the product's not perfect. Well, quit trying to make it perfect and see if anybody wants it. <laughs> and when it comes to real estate, it just means go write an offer. Go put out a sign. Go tell people, hey, I am in business. One of the, so let me give you the one way to do this in person. It's been my favorite way for a long time, and I share it with you freely. So you, you typically, when you're in person at a networking event, you have one of two situations. Either someone just asked you, hey, what do you do? Or you're about to ask them some form of, what do you do? Either way it goes, you've got to be armed and prepared for those answers. So let's talk about the situation in which someone asks you first. Hey, what do you do? By the way, this is the situation I got best at because I wanted people to ask me that question. So I came up with creative strategies, creative marketing techniques to get people to come to me because I didn't want to go to them and ask me that question. You come to me and ask me a question, I'll answer. But don't ask me to start a conversation. That's painful. (laughs) Anyway, here's my point. Here's a very easy formula that you can use. Again, this is going to be one of those moments you're going to want to take notes. Most businesses, dare I say all, can be summed up in a very quick 15 seconds, maybe 20, called an elevator pitch. But here's a formula you can use for any business, anywhere, anytime, to be able to intelligently and concisely, and most importantly, effectively, let someone know who you are and what you do. It's simply I, action verb, that would be in in brackets, I, action verb, Target market. So they can't. I, I, action verb, target market benefit. So they can benefit. I help teachers, and then state of benefit, use their 403B plans or their retirement plans in an effective way so they can quit worrying about if they'll get tenure or not. Oh, well, cool. Now, the vehicle I use with to do that, it could be anything. It doesn't really matter. What matters are the benefits to your customer. No longer do they don't care about the features and the benefits. And we've got the best XYZ on the planet. Wonderful. Do you understand me? Do you understand my problem? 
And if so, please communicate that quickly because you got about 30 seconds before I tune you out. (laughs) So that's a simple formula you can use. When you get the opportunity to, quote unquote, go first, especially when you're first starting in real estate, some of the quickest and easiest things you can do is get to a question. And the, the faster you get to the question, the better. One of my most favorite questions has always been, have you ever considered getting involved in real estate investing? Now, you realize you can change that last part to any industry you'd like. But have you ever considered getting involved in real estate investing? Now, when someone answers that, what is the likelihood that they're going to say yes? Well, it's, it's pretty high because it's ever considered very broad. Like in your entire life, have you ever even thought about for three seconds or more getting involved in real estate investing? Oftentimes you'll hear a yes. Occasionally you still hear a no, and that's fine. You, you don't really care either way. You, you just want the answer. You're starting the conversation. And then they'll say something, and you always respond with my two favorite words, two of the most powerful words, in my opinion, in the English language, especially when used together. Really? Why? From that position, you are now able and capable of finding out what it is that ails them so that you might be able to position yourself as a solution to help them. If you hear something that you can't solve, then maybe the best thing you can do is point them in the direction of a solution, which is still value as opposed to nothing. And that's what began and how I began marketing. Just verbally telling people one at a time, here's what I do. And I would always ask people, hey, what type of investing are you looking to do? Also one of my favorite questions, what type of investing are you looking to do? You've got to begin somewhere. So Here's an easy way for you to begin. One of the best marketing strategies for a business period is to educate people, as I've said before, but I love to educate using the cash flow board game. Many of you, uh, you recently entered a contest, which by the way, if you entered that contest and you got the email that says, hey, you won, I need you to give us a contact and say, hey, I'm the guy that won, I'm the gal that won, Because the only thing we have is your email address and I can't email you the board game. It just doesn't work that way. Nonetheless, you guys know that that's one of my favorite tools to go out there and educate people with. And it educates them in such a way that it helps them want to do business with you, which is one of the major things that you want to do. You want to do that. Educate, give, deposit, give people a reason other than, hey, just give me money. And I've got the best price to come do business with you. You've got to find more ways, more techniques to go out there and get your message in front of the correct market and have what they call a market to message match. Because without that, it lies flat. So what does that mean? That means you could spend a ton of money on marketing, but if you're marketing and sending your message to the wrong people, well, that's a problem doesn't mean the message is wrong. It means you could have chosen the wrong person. With today's technology, that it's, uh, it's easier to find this person than it's ever been, which is great. But you may not be able to take advantage of today's technology yet, and that's also understandable. That's why I gave you the, the two things that I used to get started. Because see, now you can go over to places like meetup.com or look at those Facebook events or Go to places where you know you believe your target market is going to be. And when you're there, you know what to say to get the conversation started, whether they ask you or you get to go first. The interesting thing is you don't have to make your marketing strategy and systems that complicated. The only thing I really have to say is that you understand that they're necessary. I look forward to talking to you soon. Until next time.